Douglas County. Welcome to District Dialogue. I am Ann Jones Guider. I'm the commissioner for District 4 out here in Douglas County. Now, District 4 is mostly the western part of the county. It's the largest area uh, uh, of the four districts. Uh, it includes uh, most everything west of uh, Highway 5, but it also includes the mall and it has part of the city in my district and it also has uh, uh, Mirror Lake, uh, part of Villarica is in my district. So we have a very diverse uh, area out here in District 4. But today I, I want to welcome y'all. Uh, we are just privileged to have some of our uh, first responders uh, from the fire department and we, in fact, we just had, while we were sitting here waiting for the to start this segment, they had a call and they had to take one of our trucks that was our backdrop. <laughs> so um, uh, that was kind of exciting. I think it was a fire truck, uh, fire, a car, car fire. fire. Yeah, car fire. We're going to be talking today about the who's and the what's of the fire department uh, to help you understand, probably answer a lot of your questions that you may have, uh, you and your neighbors have talked about and say, why is this happening and what, uh, what, what happens in this case? But we're going to be uh, answering a lot of your questions today, and I hope you enjoy this show. Um, I am privileged to have our fire chief, Scott Spencer. Now, Scott, you and I have known each other how many years? Uh, a long time. <laughs> I think you had dark I hair. I had dark hair. <laughs> so did I. Yes. So did I. But how many years have you been fire chief? Uh, I've been fire chief 21 years. Oh my goodness. You Long just grew time. up in the sure fire did. department, didn't you? Sure did. All right, and then we have uh, Scott Zachmeyer, and how long you are deputy chief? Yes, chief uh, chief uh, deputy or? Uh, deputy chief. Okay. I've been with the fire department 34 years. 34 years. Yes, now I remember when your daddy was with the volunteer fire <laughs> yes, department. I'm telling my age here, but uh, I remember him well. He was uh, very dedicated to the fire department. Yes, and, everything. and then we have Chief uh, Spence, oh, I'm sorry, Shelton, excuse me. Um, uh, you are over this number 10 fire department but you're also over all the other fire departments, right, Chief? I'm the division chief yes. over C-Shift. So yes. I'm over the day-to-day -day operations of the fire department. So there are three division chiefs. Um, yes, ma'am. You're one, and then we have Britt Wortham, and who was the other? Mark uh, Walker. Walker. Mark Walker. Yes, All right. And y'all rotate that responsibility, mm -hmm. so you have to deal with all the fire departments uh, on, when you're it's your shift. Yes, ma'am. Right, okay. Well, it's good to have you here. This is very exciting for me because uh, there's a lot of questions that the people uh, always ask me, why, 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 why? And so I'm going to rely on y'all to give me the answers to all these questions. Well, we'll sure do our best. <laughs> all right, uh, Chief, if you would kind of go over the different kinds of vehicles that are included in your department, uh, the, the large vehicles. Okay, uh, as you alluded to earlier, the, the truck that left right before we started filming, that's an engine, uh, and its pri primary responsibility is pumping water. It's also called a pumper, is it not? Uh, we call them engines for dispatch purposes, uh -huh. but it is a pumper truck. So, okay. So that's its primary role is to provide water uh, they hook up to the fire hydrants and then pump water. A lot of times they pump water to a ladder truck, which is what's behind us here. Uh -huh. uh, our ladder trucks are aerial devices, so if we need to put an elevated fire stream in service or need to perform a rescue off a multi-story building, that's what we use our ladder trucks. For. These are very useful, especially with the apartments Absolutely that we now right. have and a lot of the large warehouses that we have down in the Lithia area and out in the western part here. They absolutely are. Uh, and this, this particular uh, ladder behind us is one that was purchased or uh recently. So uh, it's, it's a very, very nice truck. We're, we're very pleased to have it. Now, the people of Douglas County was kind enough to vote in the Splosh in uh, 2016. Mm -hmm. And so we, uh, each year we, we uh, budget for so much of that money to be spent 
on the fire department. And um, if for those of you that don't know what a splash is, it's a special local option sales tax that you pay a penny on every dollar you spend here in Douglas County. So when you buy something at the mall or whatever, you're helping to pay for uh, the, the, the equipment that we are acquiring on a yearly basis. Um, let's take the pumper truck. Okay. Give, give the citizens an idea of how much they cost. Um, <coughs> our pumper trucks fully equipped cost about $550,000. So a half a million dollars is for the pumper truck. Yes, ma'am. Now that pumper truck will last us uh, in frontline service probably 12 years. Uh, and then, then we'll put it in reserve status and we'll get another five to seven years out of it. Right. So we, we rotate our equipment so that uh, the, the slower stations uh, is there a slower station? Uh, <laughs> there is. A few. <clears throat> yeah, uh, Chief Shelton, do you want to uh, What is the busiest it? station? Let's start with the big The busiest station is 10 here. Which um, is right here in the heart of Douglasville. Station 1 in Lithia. All right. And then Station 5 on Chapel Hill. On Chapel Hill. So when we oh. buy new uh, pumpers, they go to Station 10, 1, and 5. All right. And they do a couple of years at that station and then they rotate to the slower stations to get more use out of them and make them last longer. Okay, very good. And now uh, a ladder truck. What's the price tag on that one? Uh, this ladder truck fully equipped cost us uh, about $1.36 million. Woo! <laughs> so you, you see it takes a lot of money to uh, supply the fire department what is required and needed. So uh, y'all spend your uh, dollars locally. <laughs> I'd also like to point out that on our, uh, on our splost equipment, when we do purchase the rolling stock, as we call it, uh, we always try to make sure we thank the citizens for, uh, for supporting the fire department. I noticed okay. on the back of uh, the vehicle over there, it actually says something about that uh, the vehicle is paid by splosh dollars. So you, uh, you can understand uh, where your money is going, where your sales tax is going. Now, uh, there's another vehicle over there. Explain what kind of vehicle that is. Deputy Chief, you want to feel that one? That's our special uh, operations truck. It's a, uh, we call it the squad. It carries all our extrication stuff on it um, for vehicle accidents, uh, if we need to cut into a warehouse or something of that sort to make an extinguishment on a fire and it, it's it covers it's a single squad we have one for the whole county it covers the whole county from this station this one vehicle yes ma'am that's oh, on the only okay. squad we have did not know that yep. but that's for special type fires or yeah yep. okay. now okay. several of our, our pumper trucks have extrication equipment on them so they can get the extrication started while the squad is on on, on the way to them so they can help with them once they get there. So presently we have nine uh, fire stations, right? Ten. 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 Uh, but number nine is not built yet. Is Correct. It? Well, we don't have that. That's right. why I said nine. But we have a station 11. <laughs> Ten and 11. <laughs> okay, and 11. okay. Right. Right. Thank you for the correction. Yes, so we have 10 stations yes, that you have to oversee. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, okay. And we do have plans to build another fire station down on uh, Douglas Hill in Lithia Springs um, with the splash money uh, in the next couple of years. So uh, you, you, uh, you job's gonna grow a little bit. A little bit, yeah, <laughs> Your responsibility. Sure. So uh, how many personnel do you have at a station at one time? Is there any set amount? <coughs> Some of the, st the bigger stations we have, let's see, eight here. Mm -hmm. um, some of the stations have five. Okay. And then um, a couple of stations are a single engine company and there's three All at right. those stations. Very good. Uh, someone, uh, and it doesn't matter, I, I'm just going to open it up to either, either of y'all. Um, what is the difference in a advanced life support and a basic life support? Advanced life support is it's a paramedic. Um, is licensed by the state to, to run an ALS truck. Um, <clears throat> there's certain skills that they can do that a, that an EMT, advanced EMT, basic EMT can't, um, such, such as give uh, narcotics um, and 
I believe now the advanced can also, can they do EKGs? Can they, but they can't interpret them. Right. Um, so it's just a higher level of skill sets that the paramedics can do that EMTs cannot do. So oftentimes when an emergency happens, the fire truck, what, we, what people perceive as being a fire truck shows up and they wonder, where's the ambulance? The, and if you could explain sure. uh, what happens in a case like that and what the personnel is able to do that's on the truck. That's okay. uh, <coughs> as, as we've talked about, we've got 11 pumper trucks, you know, engines. Mm -hmm. uh, we've only got seven ambulances. Okay. So that ratio uh, dictates that that fire truck, you're probably gonna see a fire truck before you see the ambulance a lot right. of times. Uh, but on those fire trucks, we, we do have paramedics on some, we have uh, EMTs on almost all of them. Right. You have to be a fireman, don't you have to be an EMT? We, we that's that's what we prefer. Yes. Uh, we, we try to just hire EMTs. Uh, we, we recently have uh, revamped some of our hiring practices and we're now hiring uh, EMT, they used to be called basics, Mm -hmm. uh, we're now hiring them, uh, and they'll, they'll be on the ambulances as well. So we're uh, we're excited. We think we're we're increasing the, the the level of service to our citizens. Well, we always have shortages of personnel, mm -hmm. and we compete with all the surrounding counties that may the larger counties may pay more. Douglas County's got great benefits. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes the younger. People don't look at the benefits, but uh, as we age, we <laughs> they become very important. But we lowered the um, the entry age uh, to 18 recently, and we're hoping to capture some of the seniors that's coming out and keep them here in Douglas County like it kind of used to be. Everybody graduated here in Douglas County. They wanted to work at the local fire department. And so we're, we're lowering that age, but there's a lot more training that's going to go into place. We're not just going to put them in charge of a big truck like this. They're going to have more uh, training as far as the um, driving and uh, other things. So, yes, and that's going to be left up to the uh, chiefs at each one of the um, stations. So you want to elaborate on that? Yes, ma'am. What they will end up having to do is they'll have a task booklet that they have to meet certain criteria mm -hmm. before they'll be allowed to drive one of our trucks, mm -hmm. which will be that additional training you were talking about, uh, as well as actual behind the wheel training in non-emergency situations right. before we allow them to, to drive emergencies. Uh, we, we've got a very, very robust training program, mm -hmm. uh, and our training division does an awesome job. We've got three people that are assigned to training, and they make sure that all of our employees maintain the certifications they have to maintain, mm -hmm. uh, as well as we put out new programs all the time uh, for, our, for our people. But if anybody's interested in uh, going to work for the fire department and are going into this field, they can go to uh, du Celebrate Douglas, and uh, there's a hot spot on that page where you can, uh, you'll be taken to the open positions that's in the fire department and other departments within the county. So, um, so when uh, uh, a pumper truck or an engine shows up in an emergency, there are st there are staff on that truck that can go right to work if there's an injury. Yes, ma'am. Right. And so, I just want the public to feel assured that they're even though it's a, a fire truck. There are staff that are able to do a lot of uh, life support and things like it's that. The single engine company that, that Chief Shelton talked about. Um, also, we we staff those are ALS engines, so they have the cardiac monitors and some of the stuff the ambulances mm -hmm. have on those trucks. Do you remember how many calls y'all went out on last year? Uh, we went on slightly over eight. 18,000 calls. So there's rarely a day that you don't have some kind of call to go out on, as we just saw with this <laughs> this truck being taken out. Um, so we've explained the different uh, vehicles and everything. Um, every year, or I guess it's every year, you're rated on, uh, for insurance purposes 
uh, recently you went up a notch, didn't you? Well, sure so did. would you like to uh, talk sure. about that a bit? I'd uh, be more than happy to. Uh, Deputy Chief Zeitmeyer, uh, we kind of, he kind of led that charge, so uh, I'm going to let him talk about that. We, we went back, and, and it's not yearly. The ISO comes to us, and it's either three or five years. I think they bumped it up to three years. ISO, ISO, okay. Yes, and it's the insurance rating for our department, and it affects what the citizens pay in their insurance premiums for their homes and they come into the, our fire department and they look at everything they look at the, the water supply uh, they look at our 911 center uh, they look at internal things within the fire department and staffing and station locations and then they rate us and compare us to other departments within the nation and we were a four and we mm -hmm. bumped up to a three so the, can the citizens tell the insurance company you need to look at the new rating for Douglas County? It may save them some insurance, uh, cost of their the insurance. The ISO offices uh, <coughs> send out a letter to all the insurance companies. Oh, okay. But if, if some of our citizens do get a, uh, when, they, when they get their premium bill, if, if it hasn't gone down, they definitely need to call their insurance agent and say, hey, just want to make you aware yeah. that, that our ISO rating has, has dropped to a three. So, um, you, you said how many pumper trucks? You said seven. We got, we've got 11 pumper 11, trucks. Okay, I'm sorry. And how many, uh, you said seven ambulances? Seven ambulances. Okay. Uh, what about ladder trucks? We've actually got <coughs> two 100 foot ladder trucks uh, and one 75 foot ladder truck. Okay. And you also have a safety house out. Uh, that you go around to the schools? We, we certainly do. Uh, through the SPLOS funds we, we got in 2016, uh, we purchased a fire safety house to replace one that was bought back in the 80s. Yeah. Uh, this, this new one is state of the art. Uh, it also has a severe weather component in it. So not only can we teach uh, children what to do in case of a fire, but we can also teach them what to do in case of a tornado, uh, severe weather, you know, anything like mm -hmm. that. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a very interactive uh, uh, device, mm -hmm. and uh, the, the kids really seem to enjoy it. And uh, we always have it in September, Saturday, so, you know, we can kind of show it off. and With we, we touch a truck. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and we take it to the schools, and uh, that's part of their curriculum, uh, is to teach fire safety as well. Now, the splash doesn't just pay for the vehicle. Um, what are some of the other things that we're doing with our splash dollars? Uh, we replaced some roofs on some of our fire stations. Uh, we're currently renovating uh, fire station number three, which is down in the Bell Arc community. Uh, that was, that's the oldest one, is it that, not? One of the oldest, if not the oldest. Yeah. So uh, it was uh, it was quite funny when when we started doing the renovation. Uh, we we tore out. <laughs> Basically, we gutted that that structure, and we found some some uh, timbers with uh, some names of some of our old volunteers that signed <laughs> it. But that station is uh, scheduled to go back on online. Uh, what a couple of weeks? Yeah. Well, the, the construction the, the construction will be over uh, the middle of March. Um, it, he, Chief referred to online that building. We still have service in that area we have a temporary housing behind that station right so we are we're still operating in in that area but the building itself yes will be back in operation in fact the building has gone quite well it's Absolutely. gone quite yeah, it fast has. too yes, it has. Uh, and uh, that's a good thing yeah, we've been very uh, pleased with it even though they do have the temporary housing i know they'll be glad to get back into their firehouse too um, let's talk about the 800 megahertz radio system that the splash dollars are paying for. Okay. Uh, currently, <clears throat> our radio system that we have in the county uh, gets us by, and that's about it. Uh, the the splash funds allowed us to purchase a new radio system that's at 800 megahertz, uh, which is state of the art. Uh, it will be a nine tower system. 
remember that Douglas County is only about 200 square miles yeah. to have nine towers <coughs> in, in, within that geographical area. Uh, we are, uh, our contract calls for, we'll have 95% uh, coverage 95% of the time. Which that, that's good. That, that's, that's, <coughs> that's excellent. So far ahead of where we're at right now. Uh, and the in-building coverage is big too. With yeah. the 800 systems, they penetrate buildings better. Right now, if you go into a building, some of the structures that mm -hmm. maybe have steel walls and stuff like that, you may not be able to talk with people outside, right. Right. which is very dangerous. And, and that's, that's bad for Chief Shelton, who's operating on the scene and needs to talk to the people inside the building to get conditions and relay them information back. He struggles at this point communicating with the people that are in the building. So this in-building coverage that the Chief's talking about is, is a game changer to us for our safety as well as... And it's not, it's not going to be used just for the fire department. It's going to be used for the Sheriff's Department and uh, uh, law enforcement. Yes, ma'am. And uh, right now they can't talk to some of the surrounding counties. So if they're uh, chasing somebody, they can't even converse back and forth uh, to other It was uh, one, of the, one of the things that when we did our, 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 our drill at uh, the school, it was one of the things we learned real quick that communications was a big problem between departments and inside and outside of the building. So it's, like I said, it's a game changer for now us. Now it's expensive. It, it's, it's very expensive. Yes. Uh, and w when you were explaining the SPLOST and, and uh, how it was broken down, the fire department gets 32 percent, percent of that, that dollar. extra penny. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, <coughs> that's going to generate, uh, they anticipate about $32 million. That's got to cover our radio system, plus all of our station renovations, our equipment, and all that. So, so the fire department's going to get you know 32 percent of that. Our radio system uh, originally uh, had a price tag of about 16 and a half million dollars. Uh, <laughs> but uh, the, the first thing we did was we hired a consultant to come in and help us write the specifications. Uh, which was money well spent. Mm -hmm. uh, because of that, we've already saved. Uh, the, the the revised figure is about fourteen million nine hundred thousand. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, and we still have credit. We and, have some credits with uh, Motorola. As we got into building the system, we found <laughs> there were things that uh, we didn't necessarily need mm -hmm. that we could get credit for, mm -hmm. or things that we could change a little bit here and get credit for that. Uh, so, w I think we've done very well on managing this project, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so far we spent uh, about nine million on the radio project. We've built six towers so mm -hmm. far. Now, with the sixteen million that was estimated, will that have to be spent on the radio system, or will the anything that's left over will it divert back to your department? Yes, ma'am. That's 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 our understanding. So if if we save like a half a million dollars, mm -hmm. you then you may that's buy another right. truck. That's right. For that effort. Yeah. Um, uh, chief Shelton, why don't you kind of explain to everybody what a divisional chief, besides being over them, what does that mean? Being over the uh, all the stations. The first thing we do when we get here in the morning is, is staffing of the trucks. That probably takes a, takes a lot of your time because of the shortage. It does, and yeah. depending on the sick outs and how many people's out on vacation, um, if we have schools going on, uh, rookie schools. Uh -huh. um, so that's the first thing we do is we try to make sure that our trucks are covered, we have enough people to staff the vehicles and keep them in service. Mm -hmm. um, and then we, we, after that we go to administrative duties. Um, anything that we need to go up to the office, meet with the chiefs, um, find out what we got going on through the day, um, attend any meetings um, that we have scheduled. And then it's the day-to-day -day operations of just the fire department in general. Um, Do running, you go out on all the calls? Or just not all the calls, uh, certain calls. I can respond to any calls that, that go out, uh, but we're dispatched to any structure fire, um, certain type of rescues, um, major traumas. And so when we get there, the division chief is the incident command on the calls. And so we're, we're in charge of the overall um, functionality of the calls and, and making sure they run appropriately. 
Now, uh, some of the supplies I also paid for um, some of your gear. What do you call all that? Or turnout gear. Turnout gear, yes, which are your, the fireproof uh, uniforms and stuff like that. I guess is what <laughs> is that what it is? Fire retardant. <laughs> it's not fire. nothing's really fireproof. Okay. But it, it allows the, the our fire fire personnel to make entry inside um, a, a structure that is on fire. And you replace some of the computers within the stations? Uh, within our trucks. Within uh, the trucks? Yes, okay. uh, that's something we're real proud of. We're, uh, so that as our guys go on the calls, they can actually pull up a map of where they're going to, see hiding locations, mm -hmm. uh, if there's any additional information they need. Building descriptions. Building stuff. descriptions, if there's any hazardous materials in that building, mm -hmm. all that. Uh, of course, all that's computer-based. So. Uh, that's something that, that we thought uh, was, was needed, uh, you know, because in, in today's technology age, uh, that's where everything's going. Yeah. Now, here in Douglas County, we have a county-wide fire department. Uh, it's not like the sheriff's department, and then we have the police here in Douglasville. This is a county-wide system that is paid, also, uh, part of it's paid by the city, and uh, with county funds. So uh, it's a uh, joint adventure, I guess you'd say. But um, is, are there any other things that you want the public to know about your, your operation? Or let, let's take one question, uh, kind of off the cuff. Sometimes you see a fire truck at the grocery store. Uh, what does that mean? Are, does the, does the county buy your food, or why do you take the truck to the grocery store? No, the county <laughs> does not buy any of the food. Okay. Um, <clears throat> each station, the personnel pay a certain amount of money um, called house dues into the station fund each month, and that buys condiments, the staples, flour, sugar, tea, and things of that nature. Um, so when you see a fire truck at a grocery store, they're getting meals for that day. Uh -huh. um, and so each station, they try to cook. We're a family um, away from our, our families at home. We're a family here. And so we try to cook and eat together. And, um, and that's our downtime. That's us getting to know each other, getting to be with each other. You're and like bonding. family. Absolutely. Living under one roof. We spend a third of our life with the people here at work. Yes. So y'all have to get along. Absolutely. And I know the fire department's known for their trickery or, <laughs> or uh, little shenanigans going on but that's because y'all are like family um i hope that the filming crew will go in and just show what the common area or parts of the fire station looks like sure. besides just this bay area you got a big kitchen a big uh, dining room so y'all sit there together one of my favorite shows is uh 911 on right. tv <laughs> And that kind of shows uh, what goes on uh, among the, the people. And you, you have uh, different people with different ranks. And uh, um, so you, um, you have to keep it somewhat uh, organized, but you sure. do have uh, a lot of fun and get to know each other like family. Right. So uh, how, what are your hours if you're a fireman? Each county is different. Um, most of the metro Atlanta counties um, are 24 on and then 48 off. Okay. So some of the firemen have part-time jobs on their off days. Yes, ma'am. Right? Or M most all the time. Yeah. Uh, I know yeah. I've had one do a roof and yeah. stuff yeah. like that. <laughs> it, it's a great schedule. I mean, it, yeah. It really is. Uh, but like Chief Shelton said, uh, to me, uh, and, and we've heard many folks as, as we've interviewed them to, to hire them, we, we always ask the question, what brought you to Douglas County? Uh, and, and more often than not, we hear, well, because I did my third ride here, or I've just, y'all's reputation is y'all are more of a family. Uh, and, and, and as the fire chief, that, that to me says a lot about our department. We, we take care of one another, and it's not just at the fire station. Uh, right. You know, <clears throat> most of our guys have all three of our phone numbers in their cell phone. Right. So if they need us off duty, they, they'll call us. I've played ball with y'all mm -hmm. <laughs> back in the day. <laughs> I have um, played golf. Mm -hmm. I've, 
played in golf tournaments with y'all. And so uh, they're just ordinary people that live here. And most of them uh, live here in the community. You don't have to live here in Douglas County to be a fireman here, though, because uh, you, you have uh, well, about 40% that do not live here. So. The, the family atmosphere is, is what keeps us together as a unit. We see a lot of things in the world that, that people shouldn't have to see. And to be able to come back and have friends here that you can bounce stuff off to, some of this stuff you don't want to bring home to your family. Right. So having people here that you can bounce stuff off to and look after each other, is it, it, it's almost got to be a family. It's kind of like having P, PTSD or something. Yes, uh, we, uh, we rely on each other a lot. Because you see things that, like you say, yep. the ordinary person does not see. Yep. Was there anything else that y'all would like to add Any about the fire department? All of our stations are open um, during normal business hours uh -huh. and sometimes <laughs> into the evenings. If the, the citizens of Douglas County want to come and see and talk to us, they're, they're more than welcome to come. Uh, we can't, of course, guarantee that we're going to be there all the time. Mm -hmm. We could be out on the call, but we're, we, we want to tell people of the county and the citizens what we do for them and let them see firsthand what they do, so they're always welcome. And that brings up another point. Uh, sometimes I may live across the street from a fire department, uh, fire station, mm -hmm. but they may not respond because they're out on another call and you have to pull from another fire station. We rely on our 911 dispatchers to keep us <coughs> in the right area and they'll send us, if, if the Bill Arp truck's out on something, then they'll pull the fair play truck in or the, the Chapel Hill Road truck in. But some people don't understand that. Yep. Like, There's one right across the street. They didn't show up, but somebody from Bill Arp showed up. That's, a, that's yeah. the beauty of having a single department for the whole county is that we've got each other's area covered if somebody's out. Now, Chief, you mentioned there's three districts. Uh, three division chiefs. Three divisions yes, out here. And uh, so uh, the, you kind of got a grid of uh, where you respond from. Or no? Each, each station has a designated first in territory. Okay. Uh, that, that's outlined, you know, if, if you're in quarters. Okay. Uh, this is your response this is where territory. You would go. Uh -huh. uh, but like, like you said, if if they're out on another call, then the adjacent stations will cover that. Okay. So each station does have its designated zone. Uh -huh. uh, each engine has a designated zone, and then each ambulance has a designated zone. The ambulance zones are a bit larger because we only have seven ambulances versus eleven. Okay. Now, one thing that I've always wondered about is um, in an emergency situation, can y'all speed? <laughs> the the uh, Georgia law. And what problems do you have with the public when you have an emergency and you've got your sirens going and you've got your horn going? Uh, what can we do to help y'all? If it's safe to do so, pull over to the right okay. and stop. Let the apparatus pass and then you can get back in traffic. If you cannot pull over to the right, pull over as far as you can to the right. Uh, and if you can't pull over at all, just stop, don't move, and we'll figure out a way around you. It may be that we have to go in the opposing lane to do that. But if, if you're blocking uh, the way, you need to do something. But, but if it's not safe for you to move over a lane or whatever, you may just have to stop right there. And like I say, our, our drivers are real good at figuring out a way to get around. Uh, and if you make eye contact with the driver of the yeah. apparatus, a lot of times, a lot of they'll, times they'll tell you to do this or do that. Okay. Uh, and as far as speeding, speeding. Uh, the state law of Georgia uh, allows us to go over the speed limit, but we have to use due regard to the public. So our policy is whenever we come to an intersection, we have to be prepared to stop. And so that's that, when you blow the horn, right? Mm -hmm. The real, mm -hmm. like a fog horn type thing. Uh, so if people hear that, that means you're coming through an intersection or something like that? 
And we're still supposed to slow down and, and or stop yeah, uh, when stopped. you come to a red light or a stop sign. Mm -hmm. So it, we're supposed to make sure that all traffic is stopped. We try to make you eye contact. You can't just go through that, no, that red light, mm -hmm. right. At that time, we become liable. Because sometimes the, the people coming from the other mm -hmm. direction may not hear or see right. you. So. Well, right. the way cars are being built nowadays, they're so, they're built so that you, so, yeah, so you can't hear the sound from the outside. Oh, and that affects us too. Yeah. Is that you, you, sometimes it's the last minute before they realize you're behind them. Right. And we have to prepare for that. Okay. Well, is there anything else y'all want to cover? Mm -hmm. uh, I'd like to say thank you to the Board of Commissioners and to our County Administrator Mark Teal for supporting the fire department. All right. And the public and this is uh, for their splash yeah, dollars. The, the public <laughs> especially for uh, spending that extra penny. Yeah. Because uh, that's really helping us. And we, yeah. we truly appreciate that. Yeah. What about you, Zach? That's it. Like I said, they're welcome to come see us anytime, see what the fire department's about. And uh, if you know anybody that, that you know is interested in a career in our department to, to absolutely go to Celebrate Douglas and click on the link there. Yeah. And Chief, what about you? I would just like to echo thank you to the citizens yeah. uh, for voting in the splash and, and that's enabling us to get the radio system, which is is huge for us. Huge for you. Life Absolutely. Saving. Absolutely. Yeah. But I just want to thank each and every one of you. It's a shame we couldn't have all the firemen out here and everything, but they, they're doing their duty. But uh, just uh, God bless each and one of you, uh, the first responders. Thank you. Um, and uh, stay safe, just Thank stay you. safe. And uh, I just pray that we will all lift up prayers for our uh, heroes. I call them the heroes. <laughs> <laughs> so um, that concludes uh, District Dialogue. I hope you have uh, gotten more insight about the operation of the fire department and the, who does what and the kind of vehicles that we have. But uh, if you ever have any questions, uh, feel free to contact me and I'll try to find out. Uh, the answer. But uh, thank you again for tuning in. This is uh, Ann Jones-Skyder and good day.